Hello everybody, Raven Knight here. Well guys, Season 1 of Year 8 of For Honor is about halfway through, and just today we got our title update to Warriors Den Reveal, and boy howdy did I love sitting down with you guys to watch this. It was such a good Warriors Den, I had a great time, and thank you to all of you who came out to watch me. You know, you guys have a choice of who you watch the Warriors Den with, you could either just watch the Warriors Den, or you could go to Havoc, or Slanderous, or any of these other people who watch it live, and you came to my channel, it means the world to me, thank you guys so much for it. But you know what? Some of you guys out there didn't get to watch the Warriors Den, and I totally get it. You got stuff going on, or you just don't have the patience to sit through such a long video, or you really didn't have the time. I get it. You have your reasons, and that's fine. So you're probably saying, Raven, what was it about this Warriors Den that made it so awesome? What did you like the most about this Warriors Den? What happened? What can we expect in a week? Well, I'm glad you asked. So what we're going to do here, as I do with every Warriors Den post happening, I tell you guys a brief summary of everything that went down, and I share with you guys what you can expect and what you have to look forward to. So, without further ado, let's jump right into it. So, first of all, what are we really excited about? Well, first of all, coming back next week is the For the Creed event. Now, for those of you who don't know, this is a recurring event they like to do a lot in For Honor, where they do a crossover with Assassin's Creed, another Ubisoft property. We get a new game mode called For the Creed, which is a take on Dominion, where... The whole idea is you push the B lane with the minions, and whichever side gets B lane first, the commander of one of the bases will spawn in C or A. It'll either be Cesare Borgia or Ezio Auditore. Once that commander spawns, your team has to run over and kill that commander quickly, and, tr and once that commander dies, you get a bunch of points for your side, and that's how you win that Dominion game mode. It's really fun. It's really neat. It's got some really cool stuff going along with it, and along with that game mode comes new cosmetics, new executions, new emotes, new effects, all kinds of new stuff. It's a really good time where you get a lot of really cool stuff. I really enjoy it, and I think it's a fun game mode. We will definitely get to see more of that but what's new this time is the new hero skin coming for peacekeeper but what's really shocking people is who the hero skin is or who he is it's Ezio Auditore from Assassin's Creed now many of you are probably surprised hearing this just as I was surprised because you're probably thinking wait a second peacekeeper's female I mean Ezio's male is Ezio now going to walk around of for honor with a feminine sway to his hips and a female voice as he speaks what's going on there well, not quite. I am pleased to announce that they took the time to really edit it up so that Ezio will run like a man, walk like a man, his emotes will move more like a man, and he has a man's voice as a voiceover for his moveset. So if you pick Ezio, you're going to see him act and behave more masculine. Plus, they've also done something new where they've given an original hero skin color palette and material to Ezio so that if you want to make him look just like he did in Brotherhood, you have an original set for that while you can also, you know, adjust it to whatever else you want if you want to go that route, which I think is a creative option. Now, let me say what I think is awesome about this. What is so cool about this is it looks like For Honor could be testing the waters to possibly address the complaints about gender lock. Let's face it, a lot of people don't like the gender lock situation. So what it looks like here is they found a way to take a character who's gender locked and give them a hero skin and adjust the hero skin to be the opposite gender so that way people who don't want to play a female peacekeeper and want to play a male peacekeeper could potentially do that through Ezio. And if they can do that here, then there's the potential that in the future, with future hero skins, they could do that there. For example, a Highlander hero skin who's female, a Shugoki hero skin who's female, a Warmonger hero skin who's male, a Pirate hero skin who's male, all that kind of stuff. Or, hoping really far into the future, maybe they just do away with gender lock entirely and just make characters of different gender lock heroes, male or female, depending, and take away that altogether. That's probably hoping a little too high, but hey, the potential is there, and thanks to this, we see that it is possible, and Ubisoft could potentially do it. Now, with that said, I will say I'm not a big fan of the Ezio hero skin for two reasons. The first is, I really did want to see a Peacekeeper original, you know? I wanted to see an original Peacekeeper hero skin. I think that would have looked a lot cooler. Still make it Assassin's Creed, but just an original assassin, like an original character, for, from the assassins you know that that would have been kind of neat i would have preferred that and you could still make it male if you wanted to but i just would have liked to have seen a original peacekeeper design rather than just take oh look it's Ezio from brother from assassin's creed brotherhood there you go um and as for the Ezio design it's fine i'm not a big fan of the brotherhood Ezio. i prefer Ezio from assassin's creed 2 or assassin's Creed Revel revelations i don't know why there's so much love for the brotherhood design i mean it's not my favorite look for Ezio, but if you like it okay that's fine Plus, I will say this, 
while it doesn't look bad by any stretch i admit it looks a little odd maybe it's because i can tell they had to edit the face a great deal and make some adjustments to it to make it look like Ezio. and i'm kind of like eh. there, there's something about it that's the uncanny valley for me just i can always tell it's like that's a little odd i'll definitely still get it and i'm kind of curious if they'll add any lore will they give any lore to this or is there no lore necessary because it's Ezio? if there is lore i'll still talk about it and if there is no lore i'll talk about something you know i don't want to leave it alone but I'll just say this, I'm not too fond of it when you add existing characters from another IP into a game that has nothing to do with it. I didn't. I don't like it when they do it in Rainbow Six Siege, I don't like it when they do it in Fortnite, and I don't want to see For Honor go down that route. This isn't a big deal because they've always had crossovers with Assassin's Creed, so I guess it kind of tracks, but at the same time, I didn't really want to see it. It wasn't really what I was looking forward to. It's still fine, it's cool, and I know a lot of people are going to enjoy it. For me... I would have liked to have seen something else. That's just me. The hero skin is still cool, and if you want to get it, definitely go for it. I'm definitely going to get it just so that I can make it, uh, content about it. But hey, that is what it is. I hope you guys are excited about the hero skin and excited about what it means, because I'm excited about the potential behind this hero skin. So that's all I have to say about that. Let's move on to the next talking point, the Cathedral Map. The Cathedral Map, which most of you guys don't know about because not everyone plays brawls or dominion or, or duels or things like that where you would play in uh, cathedral cathedral has been reworked into a dominion map and let me be real it looks mwah, chef's kiss gorgeous look if you didn't feel good about the hero skin earlier you're going to love this new map the way they've redesigned it and recontextualized it looks phenomenal they've added new um statues and art to it they've adjusted the minion lane in the middle so that there's a bridge going overhead so you have two ways to go about it it looks a lot like the map did during the rom yell event but with a minion lane and all that and they've added they put geysers in place to make it a little trickier to get to certain places they've removed a couple of boulders and statues that were in the way they've opened it up a little bit the cathedral looks amazing i even made a joke that those of my fans who love my legend videos this cathedral could be Deborah's old church that has been repurposed into a fortress and how she feels about that. May need to write a little legend video about how Deborah feels about that. Huh? Huh? Could be something. Could be something. But it looks absolutely fantastic. I can't wait for it to go live next week so that I can try it out with you guys. It's going to be so much fun. Definitely look forward to that. I'm so glad that they reworked this map, and I can't wait to see what other maps they rework in the future. I know we got one more rework map coming up later on this year. I don't know when it'll be, but I look forward to it. It's going to be really cool. All right, so... With that now out of the way, let's get into the next part we all want to talk about. The part that everyone wants to hear about. Well, let's hold off on that right now, because there's one other thing we need to say. Armor sets! We're getting some brand new armor sets for the Knights and Vikings. Now, before any of you panic and say, We're the Samurai Rule in or Outlanders! They've said it before. They've said it again. They're doing a new system now, where what they do is the first season, they do Knights and Vikings... Then the next season, they do Samurai Woolen and Outlanders. Then the third season, they do Knights and Vikings again. And then the fourth season, they do Samurai Woolen and Outlanders. So, they're just doing Knights and Vikings this time around. Next season, we'll do some more. Okay? Awesome. And let me just say this. They look awesome. The Vikings look really good. But the Knights look peak. Okay? They look absolutely phenomenal. Now, a lot of you may be saying, these look pretty bland. But they explain the reason they do is because they wanted these to be more blank canvas characters. Because there's a lot of steel and blankness on them because they want you to be able to customize them even more. Add more color. Add more material design. They really wanted you to take these uh, um, armor sets and really go crazy with them. So I really like what they did. And let me be real. The Warmonger and Peacekeeper and Lawbringer looks this time around are so good i will be getting them heck i'd say the peacekeeper look in this armor set looks even better than the Yetzio one okay okay i'm just being real looks absolutely phenomenal thank you so much ubisoft they look great okay now let's get to the part you all want to know about the patch notes there are three major things we need to talk about with the patch notes and praise be to jc for giving us some of these awesome updates first of all the highlander rework has been released it will come out next week with everything else and they've made a lot of changes now i'll be the first to admit i'm not a big highlander fan i've come to respect him and those who play him but the big thing for me now is i know that when the new week comes and this title update 2 launches i'm gonna see nothing but highlanders running around for a little while and that's going to be pain because highlanders got a pretty good rework coming They've nerfed some of his damage output from his unblockable heavies, but they've also adjusted his offensive and defensive capabilities. I can't remember everything that they said, so I'm putting the screens up here so that you guys can kind of see what all they said and what all the changes are coming. But from the, from the 
crux of it, from what I could tell, they've adjusted it so that he can go more easily into his offensive stance, they've made his kick that it would guarantee an unblockable heavy feintable, they've allowed him to dodge forward and do his grabbing animation so that he can throw you down so that it's a little bit easier for him to grab you, they've also taken away his wave riding attack, which is where he acts like he's going to do a forward dash up top heavy but then goes into a dodge heavy they've taken that away and instead giving him a dodge heavy and offensive stance which is with its own animation which is going to be really cool they've taken away um hyper armor on his defensive light spam animation so you can't do that in chains anymore and they've also increased the speed of his running and the speed of his top heavy so that if he gets you in the guard break you have a better chance of getting that heavy that you really want if you catch him in the guard break so they've done a lot to fix up highlander they've done even more than that like with a zone which gosh i can't even remember all they said about a zone they basically made it uh, a really really strong zone now that can flow into a uh, uh into a heavy finisher it's gonna be crazy i'm really interested to see how this goes and who knows maybe it'll make me a highlander fan once again but for now all i know is i'm gonna see nothing but highlanders for the next few weeks so that's all i know about that so if you guys are big highlander fans you're gonna be excited about this change but the exciting thing that i am very pumped about and havoc is also pumped about we talked briefly about it the new changes coming to warden now, what really came to Warden here is that his shoulder bash, they've given him three follow-up options. All of them are beautiful with brand new animations. They've given him animations that involve half-sorting. Now, what half-sorting is, for who, those who are not familiar, is where you have one hand on the handle of the sword and the other on the blade to have more control, treating it as a puncturing weapon. Here, what they've done is, after the shoulder bash, if you go for your light mix-up, you can still do the double light, but now you'll do a jab and then hilt strike. If you go for the heavy, you will grab the blade and strike with the um, handle. And then if you do a zone, you can do a zone attack in the exact same way in a wide arc. And all of them, I think the heavy and zone, have hyper armor. And the reason they did it this way is because they said that the big problem with Warden was that he was strong in duels and one-on-ones, but in a group fight, he couldn't safely do his shoulder bash without someone interrupting him and attacking in mid-attack. So they've changed it so that he has some hyper armor, as well as has some new animations to make him feel like a sword master rather than just a spammy character. And frankly, amazing. I am singing JC's praises right now for what he did. It looks awesome. It looks amazing and they said that there's more coming to warden they said right now they were trying to trying to start small work their way up piece by piece with warden that makes me so happy because i kind of want to know what they're going to bring to warden next i mean i'm going to sit down i'm going to maybe make a video where i talk about what more they could do for warden to make me happy so hey warden fans out there and i know you're out there rejoice warden's getting some love all right so aside from that Mostly quality of life updates. A bunch of characters are having their back dodge lights removed. I can't remember every character that they added, but if I remember right, it was Highlander, Varingian Guard, um, Black Prior, Afira, uh, Valkyrie, Warlord, and Kyoshin. I think those were the ones they said. If I got them all right, awesome. If I missed any, let me know down in the comments. But I think I got them all right off of memory. They've taken away their back dodge lights because they're kind of a spammy move that doesn't really do any good for you. It's kind of, it's way just too safe to use because what you do is if someone swings a heavy at you and you do a back dodge and light, their heavy will always miss. Your light will always catch them. They said it's too safe of something to do and it's way too easy for them to pull off. So they've just removed it altogether. Even if you try to back up and do a light, it'll be like you did it from neutral. You'll stop moving to do that. That light so i'm okay with that i think that's a good change they've also nerfed a lot of characters and i'm going to try to list them all here they have nerfed shinobi afira ocelotl and berserker so that their attacks do a little less damage not a lot they just nerf their damage numbers because right now they're a little bit too strong and so they nerf some of their damage capabilities they also nerfed hitakiri but not in the same way they made it so that he is guard break vulnerable after a heavy strike what they noticed was that Hitakiri could safely swing his heavy and then do another heavy right after and make him completely safe from guard break. So they've made it so that if he misses his attack, he can be guard broken a little bit easier because there's a window for it now. 
Now, I may be saying that a little bit too simplistically, and if someone understands that a little bit better than me, please let me know down in the comments. Mechanics is not my forte, but I did want to explain that as best as I could. So we're getting some nerfs to some really powerful characters who needed those nerfs. We're getting the removal of the back dodge light, which I think needed to be removed a long time ago. We're getting a warden, re a warden fix that will make him a lot stronger in 4v4s with some new awesome animations, and the Highlander rework is just straight up going live. As for the testing grounds having to do with ganking changes, they said that they got a lot of good feedback. They need to think about it and adjust it this isn't going to be a, a day process this will probably take a long time to really fix and look over so we can expect some new changes one other thing they said that they were adding which i think is kind of neat and i gotta praise them for this in honor of earth day they're adding an eco-friendly mode to for honor and essentially what this does is it allows you to save power on the game if you choose the eco smart option that means if you're an idol then it will lower the quality and graphic settings so that your p so that your pc or console isn't using as much power to show it so that means if you're idle you're saving power you're saving money and you're saving the planet and you know what guys i'm cool with that that's actually a cool idea rather than shove some environmentalist message or outfit or emblem down our throats they're just saying, hey, we're adding something to the game which will save you power, save you money, and help the planet. I thought, based? That's kind of cool. I like that. That's a great way to do it. So good on you, For Honor. I think that was a really cool idea. So definitely check that out when it comes out. But that is about it for all the changes that came out. Honestly, guys, looked really neat. This was a really cool Warriors Den. The only negative I have to say is I didn't really want Ezio Hero skin for Peacekeeper. But even with this Ezio Hero skin... There's a light at the end of that tunnel that maybe gender locking issues could be a thing of the past, potentially. I'm not going to make any promises I can't keep, of course, but it is a promising thing to take a look at, and hopefully in the future we'll see some awesome stuff. But with just what we have here, this is a really good Warriors Den. I'm very excited for Title Update 2. Let me know down in the comments what you guys are excited for and what you think about everything. Love you guys. Thank you guys so much again for joining me for the Warriors Den if you were there, and if you weren't there, for just watching this video. Thank you guys. You are the best community I could ask for. And as always, guys, I will see you in my next video. Take care. Enemy team is breaking. Watch out, watch out, I got it. No, it's okay, I'll get it. No, wait! We'll use the power of friendship.